coffee. Some may see it simply as a drink, but to most people, it has become something they can't live without. So what is it? What is it about this drink that makes it so addictive, being that 50% of the nation drinks coffee? Coffee itself is something many of us have incorporated into our daily habits, but have we ever taken a step back to look at what this caffeine consumption may be doing to us? And have we even realized how dependent we are on a drink, sometimes having the same type of withdrawal as if you were using a drug? In addition to it harming our health, the coffee business is hurting our wallets. If coffee is your addiction, you are another consumer feeding into the $68.5 billion coffee industry. Being that what you've heard so far are negative facts, let's see what keeps so many people hooked on this drug we call coffee. So what is coffee? If you search coffee in the dictionary, the definition you will get is as follows. A beverage made by percolation, infusion, and decoction from the roasted and ground seeds of a coffee plant. This definition may be good, but it doesn't tell us what coffee really is and how it truly affects our health. First, let's start with how the drink coffee compares to a drug. The addictive factor in coffee is caffeine. Caffeine is a substance that occurs in plants and is a stimulant to our central nervous system. The more often we drink coffee, the higher tolerance we build up to caffeine. Our bodies then need more of the substance to get the same effects. They may also become dependent on coffee to the point that they develop withdrawal symptoms if they suddenly stop drinking it. Also, drinking more than six cups a day can cause caffeinism, with symptoms such as anxiety and agitation. This is where avid coffee drinkers can have withdrawal symptoms. It can happen about 12 to 24 hours after the last dose of caffeine. Symptoms can vary from person to person, but the most common symptom is a headache. Other symptoms include anxiety, fatigue, reduced alertness, drowsiness, and depression. Some subjects reported symptoms that were so severe they couldn't work. Research has shown that abstaining from caffeinated coffee for a whole day may help to improve sleep quality. This drink is so powerful that even people who missed one regular cup of coffee can experience withdrawal symptoms. This next video will show how our brains work on coffee. But how does it work? What exactly does coffee do to your brain? Whenever you're awake, a chemical called adenosine slowly accumulates in your brain. And this adenosine binds to receptors which slow down brain activity. Ultimately, the more adenosine there is, the more tired your brain feels. Which makes sense, as the longer you're awake, the more fatigued you become. Conversely, while you sleep, the concentration of adenosine declines, gradually promoting wakefulness. But it turns out that the caffeine in your coffee is incredibly similar to adenosine in structure. The caffeine works its way through your bloodstream and into your brain, where it starts to compete and binds with adenosine receptors. But because it's not adenosine, the sleepiness effect isn't felt. Adenosine can no longer bind, meaning its calming properties are diminished, which is great for you when you're feeling tired. However, with long-term use of caffeine, your brain responds by creating more adenosine receptors, which means more caffeine is required to elicit the same response. It also means that when you try to quit drinking coffee or miss your daily intake, you might experience some withdrawal symptoms and feel more tired than you would have before you ever drank coffee. But the caffeine doesn't stop there. It also stimulates the production of adrenaline, you know, the fight or flight hormone. This increases your heart rate, gets your blood pumping, and even opens up your airways. Furthermore, it affects dopamine levels by preventing its reabsorption in the brain, which makes you feel happy. In fact, this is the exact same thing that cocaine does, just to a lesser degree. It's a drug after all. This dopamine stimulation is also the aspect of coffee that makes it moderately addictive. So, so it is true like many drugs, caffeine enhances dopamine signaling in the brain. Dopamine is a chemical that helps control movement, motivation, and emotions. So enhanced dopamine signaling makes a person feel more awake and alert. Because caffeine produces that alert feeling, it's classified as a stimulant. Caffeine is known to be the most mood-altering drug in the world. The American Psychiatric Association has recently defined caffeine withdrawal as a syndrome resulting from abrupt cessation or reduction in caffeine, following prolonged daily use. This sounds familiar to drug users and how they get withdrawal from not getting their dose that day, since it's usually something they have daily. The World Health Organization's International Statistical Classification of Diseases and Related Health Problems recognizes caffeine addiction as a disorder. I'm getting a tall chai. And a large black coffee. A what? Large black coffee. Do you mean a venti? No, I mean a large. He means a venti, yeah, the biggest one you got. A venti is large. Mm. You may be wondering what could be classified as excessive caffeine use. It is found that more than 10 
8 ounce cups per day can produce severe effects like tremors, anxiety, insomnia, and a crash of extreme fatigue once the caffeine starts to wear off. About 400 milligrams, which is about 4 cups of coffee, is said to be the safe amount for adults. To give you an idea, a Starbucks venti is 300 milligrams. Safe may not be the best word considering this doesn't take into account the unhealthy side effects on our bodies. This is also different from person to person. For example, a healthy adult may be able to handle four cups per day, but an adult with prior health issues may have a different or more damaging effect from this much coffee per day. Hi, Gianna. Hey. First, I will be interviewing my friend Gianna Monastero. She's a PJP student who has never seen in homeroom without a Dunkin' Donuts coffee every morning. So I'm gonna ask you a few questions based off of you drinking coffee a lot. Okay. When did you first start drinking coffee and how much did you drink? So it was when I first got my license, so the end of sophomore year, and I drank one coffee in the morning before school. How many cups of coffee do you drink per day now? So one in the morning, I usually get one on my way home after school, and then I'll make one like mid-afternoon, like when I get home like 4.30. Do you feel as if sometimes you have a dependence and you can't even get through the day without your cup of coffee? Yes, I don't think I'd be able to get up through the day without at least one cup of coffee. And have you ever felt any type of withdrawal from not having coffee? And what are your symptoms? Yes, and it's usually like, say if I didn't drink coffee in the morning, I would definitely get like a horrible headache, like third period. Do you buy your coffee at a store or do you make it at home? Usually I buy my coffee at Dunkin' Donuts. How much do you spend when you go every day? So, if I buy two small coffees from Dunkin', they're two eleven each, so four dollars and twenty two cents a day. And do you think it's a lot to spend on coffee per day? Um, for a high schooler that could be spending their money on something much better, yes, but I don't think I'd be able to do it without it. And last question: Do you ever think you'd be able to stop drinking coffee? Hmm, probably not. <laughs> Thanks so much for your time, Gianna. Coffee affects our brains and causes a dependence as well as withdrawal, but most of us who are avid coffee drinkers notice this because it commonly affects us. But are we aware of the other effects drinking so much coffee has on the rest of our bodies? Coffee drinkers increase their risk of developing heart disease because it increases the amount of cholesterol and other fats in the blood. It also raises your homocysteine level, which is directly associated with heart disease. Some doctors even suggest that there is an association between drinking coffee and heart attacks. While this may not apply to people who have an occasional cup of coffee every once in a while, for the people who are avid coffee consumers, they may be unaware of the fact that their addiction is increasing the risk of heart disease. Drinking coffee can also leave you very dehydrated, which is another thing to be watchful of while having your daily dose. Next, coffee can also negatively affect your skin. Because caffeine dehydrates your body, your liver works harder, which causes toxic buildup in your body. When your body has a presence of low-level toxins, they disrupt the healthy skin function. Also, because caffeine is a diuretic, it causes you to lose hydration, which has a direct effect on your skin. Caffeine can cause your blood vessels to constrict, which doesn't allow as many antioxidants and nutrients to be delivered to the skin to promote collagen production. These changes can give your skin a more aged appearance than in people who do not consume caffeine. Now let's look into how coffee can affect specific groups of people, including women. Research has shown that coffee can have an effect on pregnant women. As we've discussed, caffeine is a stimulant and it increases your blood pressure and heart rate both of which are not recommended during pregnancy. Caffeine crosses the placenta to your baby, and although you may be able to handle the amount of caffeine you intake, your baby cannot. A baby's metabolism is still maturing and cannot fully metabolize the caffeine in coffee. Any amount of caffeine can also cause changes in your baby's sleep pattern or normal movement pattern in the later stages of pregnancy. Numerous studies on animals have shown that caffeine can cause birth defects, premature labor, preterm delivery, reduced fertility, and increase the risk of low birth weight offspring and other reproductive problems. 
In 2008, two studies on the effects of caffeine related to miscarriage showed significantly different outcomes. In one study released by the American Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology, it was found that women who consume 200 mg or more of caffeine daily are twice as likely to have a miscarriage as those who do not consume any caffeine. So now knowing this information on the risk of drinking coffee, including a negative effect on your skin, brain, heart, your future child, and overall health, do you think your daily dose of caffeine is still worth it? Or will your coffee addiction continue to consume you?